green chemistry. The main idea is to perform your activities in such a way that you reduce their overall environmental impact. So you want to optimize your yields to get less waste. You want to perform your syntheses in such a way that you produce fewer toxic byproducts and you want to use less petroleum because that stuff is a limited resource and once it's gone, it is gone. Here's an example of a way to reduce waste. Here's an example of a strategy to reduce waste. Let's say we've got this asymmetric trisubstituted alkene and we want to produce the Markovnikov alcohol. One way to get a Markovnikov alcohol from an alkene is via oxymercuration demercuration. In the first step, we use mercuric acetate and water, and in the second step, sodium borohydride. The thing with oxymercuration demercuration is that everything marked in red is waste material. That means you are putting toxic mercury ions into the environment. So, not only are you wasting a lot of material, you're also creating a toxic byproduct. There must be a better way to do this. If we do acid catalyzed hydration, we use a catalytic amount of H plus and water. The only waste material is the catalytic amount of the proton, but it's a catalytic amount, so it's a super small amount. Also, no toxic byproducts. So oxymercuration demercuration has poor atom economy. Acid catalyzed hydration, on the other hand, has good atom economy. However, there is one case where oxymercuration demercuration is a greener option than acid catalyzed hydration. Say you were trying to do this synthesis. So maybe we should use acid catalyzed hydration. So in the first step, the pi bond acts as a base, taking a proton from the hydronium and a secondary carbocation. That secondary carbocation will immediately undergo a 1,2 hydride shift. This rearrangement produces a tertiary carbocation. Water then performs nucleophilic attack at that tertiary carbocation, and then another proton transfer happens to deprotonate it, and you end up with this tertiary alcohol, which is the wrong product. So in this case, acid catalyzed hydration has essentially zero atom economy because of rearrangement. The point is, one synthetic method versus another well, if you have to decide what's the greenest, it is based on the context. What's best in one situation, acid catalyzed hydration, is actually worse in another when rearrangement is an issue. So, the superiority of acid catalyzed hydration over oxymercuration, demercuration for Markovnikov hydration when there is no possibility of rearrangement demonstrates the principle that catalysts are better than stoichiometric amounts. So the acid catalyzed hydration is better. Again, when rearrangement is not an issue. Another example is performing syn dihydroxylation. Syn dihydroxylation adds two hydroxyl groups across the double bond and it adds them from the same side, both on top as shown here where both hydroxyl groups are on wedges and on the bottom which would be the enantiomer where both hydroxyl groups are on dashes. One way to do this involves using a stoichiometric amount of osmium tetroxide followed by sodium sulfite in water. This is bad. Osmium tetroxide is toxic. And so we're using a stoichiometric amount. That means that we're releasing a bunch of OSO4 into the environment. There's a better process that's catalytic. The catalytic process involves using a catalytic amount 
of osmium tetroxide, so a much smaller amount of the toxic stuff, and then a stoichiometric amount of NMO or t-butyl hydroperoxide to regenerate the osmium tetroxide. So this produces less waste. Okay, so catalytic is better than stoichiometric. Then there's the issue of energy efficiency. If you can do something at room temperature, that's going to create, or that's going to use less energy than a reaction that has to be done in boiling water, for instance. Then comes the issue of renewable feedstocks. If you can make it from corn, it's better than using petroleum. For instance, one component of petroleum is ethylene. And that's used as a precursor for lots of stuff. Ethanol, however, is a product of the fermentation of grain. Now, you can make ethylene from ethanol simply by doing acid-catalyzed dehydration with concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. So, fermentation of grain to make ethanol and then acid-catalyzed dehydration and you don't have to use petroleum to do it. Although, you're probably burning petroleum to make the heat. Still, we could set this up to use energy from the sun to heat the mixture, and then it would be much greener process.